One of the biological parameters that we monitor at Utah Water Watch is for E. coli. E. coli is a bacteria. It's a bacteria that's found in the digestive systems of all warm-blooded animals. So humans, cows, pigs, sheep, your dog, even birds have E. coli in them. The test that we use is called a Coliscan Easy Gel test to monitor for the presence of E. coli. There are two parts. There's a field collection where you collect the sample from your site and then a indoor portion of it where you actually do the incubation and plating of, of a petri dish. So I'm going to show you how to do the outdoor field collection portion of it. Because E. coli is a bacteria, we have to use a sterile sanitized container to capture it. This is called a whirl pack. When you get yours, you'll see that it has a perforation on the top. When you're out ready to go do your monitoring, you will remove the perforation and then you will hold the whirl pack by these white tabs. And this is how you can open and close it. You do not want to stick your hands or have anything um, go in there because then you could contaminate it. So now that I've opened it, I'm going to go into, into the stream, into my monitoring location, and this is where I'm going to collect my water sample from. You're going to go into the stream. You want to collect it in the mid part of the water column, not right at the surface. And you don't want to stick it all the way through the bottom to get a lot of sediment in there. So I'll have it closed. I'll stick it underwater. I'll open it up, let it fill up some of the way, close it, and bring it back out of the water. Still holding it by the white tabs, never touch the inside of it. Now I'm going to hold it by the yellow tabs. You want to make sure that you've filled your water up somewhere um, to about the white level. For your test, the maximum that you'll need is only 10 milliliters, so you don't need to have it filled all the way up. And what you will now do is you'll seal the bag, flip it over once, flip it over twice, flip it over three times, and now you'll take the yellow tabs and twist them together, kind of like a, like a bread basket. So now you have it twisted, sealed. So now the water is completely sealed. You can see I can shake it, you can drop it on the ground. Doesn't happen. It's completely sealed and it's sterile. I've never touched the inside of it. If you collect this, this is the whole part that you do for the field collection sample. If you're going to do the next part within one hour, you do not need to refrigerate this or um, keep it cool. If you're going to stay out here and go some fishing and do some hiking or some other things and you're not going to get to the inside portion until after an hour, this needs to either be stored on, um, in a cooler with ice or it needs to be stored in a refrigerator at a cool temperature. You can keep your water sample for up to eight hours until you do the next indoor uh, plating part of it with the easy gel medium. Now we're inside after we've collected our field sample from Temple Fork from the stream, so this would be your stream or lake water that you've collected at site. This is the only part of the Tier 1 Utah Water Watch that you have to do inside. Um, for each sample that you collect, you will do two tests. So you're doing a duplicate. This is one of our quality control steps. So you'll need your one bag of the water sample. You'll need two pipettes, two petri dishes and two of the easy gel e coli medium now remember that your e coli easy gel medium is frozen you keep it frozen until you're ready to do the test and so when you're ready to do the test pull out some ones let them thaw for about an hour and then you'll use it as a liquid so how we do the test we take our bag we want to shake it up to help ensure it's very well mixed so shake it up and then we're going to open it again, open the yellow tabs first. We're going to unroll it. And then remember you want to grab the white tabs and open it up this way. So we're still not trying 
you know, to use our fingers, we're keeping the inside of it sterile and clean. So now that you've opened it up and you have it open, um, if, sometimes you can do this with one hand or you can have a, another partner hold it. If you're doing it by yourself, you can always just take it and put it in a cup like this and that'll make it easy to hold. You will take your first test and you'll see on here you have it marked with your pipette is marked in millimeters or milliliters, excuse me. So the very top line on it says 1.0 milliliters. For this test, you need to know how much volume you're putting in here. So this test is designed to work to be able to place between one to five milliliters into the easy gel medium. This test is designed this way so that there's some flexibility. If you're testing an area that was that you would assume would be very high in E. coli, you could do a, a lower amount so there wouldn't be as many E. coli colonies to count. So what I do with the pipette is I take it, depress it, stick it in the water, and then I slowly suck up water till it gets right at the one milliliter mark. I'll then take it, open up my thing and depress it a couple times to get all the water out. So that's one milliliter. I'm going to put two milliliters in for this test. So I will open it up, take one milliliter, put it, get squirted a couple times to make sure all the water gets out, and then I'll recap it. So now I have my Easy Gel E. coli uh, medium mixed with the sample water. So now I'm going to just gently swirl it. That's all you need to do. You just need to gently swirl it. You don't need to you know, really shake it really hard. Just swirl it around. And now I'm going to place it into my Petri dish. Now before you place it into your Petri dish, it's important that you take good notes as a scientist and you record on it. So I recorded the name of the, the creek that I got this from, Temple Fork. Today's date of when I am uh, using the uh, doing this test, um, how big my sample size was, I put two milliliters in, and then the time that I am entering doing this second step. This is not the time that I collected the sample, this is the time that I collected here. I need to know this because it's about, it's important to know how long we let it incubate for. And then I wrote this one, S1 for sample one because we do two samples at a time. So I'll just go through and I'll mark my other one the same way, so I'll write down the name Temple Fork, write down today's date, write down I'm putting two milliliters because I'm going to do the same for each one. It's all right, 1500 for 24 hours time, military format, and then this is my sample two. Okay, so now that I have this in here, uh, taken the E. coli Easy Gel Medium, gently swirled it. I will open it up, I'll open my petri dish, and I'll pour it out and evenly move it around all across and make sure I get everything in there. Once again, we want to keep these things sterile, so I'm just opening it and closing it, and that's all I'm going to do for the, uh, for the sample gem. Once they become a solid gel, then you're able to pick them up and move them around. We recommend that you do this first incubation, this first part of the incubation where you're doing the plating. We recommend that you do this at the place where you're going to leave them. We are now going to store our two E. coli test uh, petri dishes in a warm, draft-free place uh, out of direct sunlight. So this test is designed to work at, um, at in your home. It can work at room temperatures anywhere generally above. 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, these can work, work in there and they take um, a minimum of 48 hours to incubate at room temperature. The first 24 hours is going to be very little that you're going to see on there. Um, I have two ones that I prepared beforehand. You can see that they're now a gel. I can flip them over and it doesn't run out anywhere. And these ones are 24 hours old, right around the 24 to 28 hour mark, you'll start to see little tiny fleckings. And if you can look on this one up close, you'll see we'll have these little uh, formation of 
just the beginning formations of our bacteria colonies. Once you start to see this, that means it needs to have at least another 24 hours to completely mature. So to do this test at room temperature takes a minimum of 48 hours. If your house is towards the colder side of room temperature, it may take longer than 48 hours. Generally, this test takes somewhere between 48 to 60 hours. Uh, we never want to let this test go longer than 72 hours because after 72 hours, we can start to have the bacteria colony just reproducing on the petri dish instead of um, being an accurate sample of what was in the water. So how do you know when your test is ready to read? Um, generally, we recommend that you wait another 24 hours after you start to see the initial flecking of your, uh, your sample. But one of the things that you can look at is when you open this up, you should see clearly defined colonies that have a very strong color with a nice round circular colony. Sometimes you'll get these examples, you'll start to get these kind of oblong splotches on the surface. Um, those are indication of also that the, the test has been had enough time for the colonies to mature. So it does take a little bit of practice, but once you've done this once or twice, you'll get familiar in seeing this. You want to make sure that um, you feel confident that you're counting the colors correctly. So if you come and look at your test and you say, mm, I'm not really 100% sure if this is mature, maybe give it another hour or two and then always come back. Here are two samples that I've done that are 48 hours um, old and we have them in here and as you can see they are they have um, many colorations that are on these petri dishes. Uh, the ones that are pink or reddish in colored those are total coliforms. We're not interested in those ones. The ones that are dark blue or purple those are E. coli's. So those are the ones that we are counting uh, for our test. Now, hopefully your water quality sample that you're doing will not have as much E. coli on this. This is an example of a very high elevated sample. And so what we would next do is count up all the colonies that have E. coli on them. Sometimes when you have a lot of them, it's easy to uh, place it on a white disc and then you, on a white piece of paper, and then you can move the paper across the petri dish across the paper so when everything starts to go when the blue dots start to go across the the paper you can count all of them so you just slowly move it across and count all of the tests this test is designed to be done at home and uses um, uh, a color guide to have E. coli specially react. All of our tier one volunteers have the color guide given to them so you can compare your chart, the colors of the pictures of E. coli to see that if, if what your bacteria samples are actually E. coli. Now that we've let our colonies, our, our E. coli samples mature, we're now ready to fill out the data sheet. So we have two readings that we did, our two duplicate samples. The first thing that we need to write down is the sample size. We put in two milliliters for each one. The sample size is critically important to know because this test is done as a dilution. E. coli is measured as the number of coliform forming units per 100 milliliters. Because we did not place a 100 milliliters into the bottle, we have to do uh, a little bit of math. So we place two in there. So how we do this is 100 divided by two, which would be 50, and then we times that by the number of colonies that we counted. On the first one, I counted 38 E. coli, dark blue or purple colonies, and on the second one, I counted 32. So 100 divided by two is 50, 50 times by 38 would be 1900. For the second one, it would be 50 times by 32, which is 1,600. We then take the average of them. The average of those two numbers is 1,750, and we record that right here for our average E. coli. The only other information that we need, we need the incubation time in hours. We wrote down the time it starts, so you can just count up the number of hours until you did the reading. This provides us information about how long the E. coli cells were able to mature. And then just 
the general temperature of the room that they were in. Um, you have your thermometer, you can leave it out in that area to get the general temperature. We don't need to know exactly how the temperature fluctuates and changes throughout the day, just what the general temperature is. For our room right here, it was at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. So once you record all this information, this is what we need for you to report for your complete E. coli sampling for the Utah Water Watch Tier 1 program. Now that we've completely completed our monitoring for E. coli, we need to dispose of the petri dishes properly. Um, these are not biohazards, but this, these are living bacteria colony cells of E. coli, so we want to make sure we just properly dispose of it. How you do that, you can just take some household bleach, Lysol, some uh, Clean Air 409, something, and just pour about a tablespoon of it on the surface of the E. coli petri dish. So we'll do that for each one. I'll let it sit for one minute. After it has sit for, for, sat for one minute, I'll open them up. I will take them, gently place them in a Ziploc or another type of plastic bag that I can seal. Close it back up. And then I can just take this and then just dispose of it in the trash. Any household trash would be fine.